Hello all! This video is going to be a little bit different from my normal ones. You see, I was on WikiHow recently looking up how to breathe because I'd forgotten, and we all know that WikiHow has some incredibly weird articles. Articles like how to fake a fever, and how to die peacefully, and how to smoke a cigarette. I'm not comfortable with that being an article. And of course, how to touch a girl. And need I mention that it's expert co-authored, what I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall when that guy is applying for a job. So, thank you so much for applying to work here at Job. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I have a lot of leadership qualities. I'm very well organized and I consider myself to be an expert in touching girls. Uh... But I thought, you know what, I'm just going to type Victorian into the WikiHow search bar and see if anything comes up. And oh yes, stuff did come up. So we are going to react to these Victorian WikiHow articles together. So we've got this, articles about Victorian costumes. And I want to look at how to dress like a woman in the 1800s and how to be similar to a girl from the Victorian era. Let's just jump right in to the... Uh, Woman smiling creepily in the fake bonnet. How to dress like a woman in the 1800s. Whether you're dressing up for Halloween, cosplay, a theater production, or just for fun, women's fashion in the 1800s is a great choice. A classic Victorian look pairs long, flouncy skirts with decorative hats and intricate curling hairstyles, while a pioneer-themed look is simpler and more practical, well-suited for roughing it on the frontier. Whichever look you go with, you're sure to attract compliments and admiration. There are several things to unpack there. First of all, curling hairstyles weren't really fashionable until the 1880s, but who's here to judge? Also, it has this weird distinction between pioneer and Victorian. The pioneers were happening in the Victorian era. Pioneers were Victorians. So this kind of distinction that they have there is, is a little bit weird. And right off to the bat, we're off to a good start. Wear a corset for a regal, historically accurate look. Corsets were a necessity for any Victorian woman, and their modern resurgence in popularity means it's easy to find or buy one for your own Victorian look. For the most historically accurate look, go for a Victorian-style S-shaped silhouette, which will give a classic hourglass shape. I'm a little bit curious about what they mean by S-shaped S -shaped silhouette. Do they mean like the Edwardian S-bend? I kind of think they don't. I think by S-shape they just mean like hourglass shape. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. Good on them. So far, this article, although it's not perfect, has the Adelaide stamp of approval, but let's see if it can keep it. Oh goodness, I did not need to see that picture. Pull on old-fashioned stockings. Yes, you should wear stockings. However, the picture that they've chosen to go with this, I'm not going to show because it's not decent. Go with black shoes, boots, or footwear. Footwear was pretty simple for Victorian women and tended towards flat-heeled black lace-up boots that reached to their mid-calves. In the later half of the century, though, shoes were pointed and rounded toes started to come into fashion as well. Choose whichever style is more comfortable and best suits your look or outfit. I really don't know what they're talking about here. There were many, many different colors of boots that were fashionable in the 1800s. Black was just one of many. Ask American Duchess. Also, I have not seen any examples of shoes for adult women that did not feature a heel. So I have no idea what they're talking about with this flat heeled boot stuff. All boots that I've seen for women had at least some sort of heel, even boots that are advertised as having no heel or having a small heel still had at least half an inch of heel. Also, in the image that they used, both of these boots have heels. The ones on the right look like men's boots and then the ones on the left are clearly supposed to be women's boots, but that kind of heel would not have been seen in the 1800s. They did not have the capability of making stiletto heels back then. Ooh! Complete the look with a decorated hat. Victorian women always sought to keep their skin protected from the sun, which meant that large hats were all the rage when outdoors. Large hats were not a thing for any of the Victorian era. Large hats didn't come in really until after Queen Victoria had died. Also, what's going on with the hats in this picture? The one on the bottom looks like a man's bowler hat, and then on the top we've got, what, a steel sun helmet for the medieval knight who wants to go on crusade but doesn't want to get sunburned? 
So now we're going into the pioneer look section, and this is what they use for a picture of a pioneer woman's ensemble. This is not what comes to my mind when I think of pioneer woman. This comes to my mind when I think of the Murdoch mysteries, but I suppose to each his own, it's just that my own is historically accurate and their own is not. <laughs> So this next part fills me with a mixture of utter joy and utter depression. Wear a corset or skip it for a more outdoorsy look. Some pioneer women wore corsets, but it wasn't considered a necessity as it was in the city. That is the part that fills me with depression. Pioneer women wore corsets. We have letters, we have, we have documentation, we have their diaries. They mention wearing corsets. They didn't skip the corset. Can you imagine having to walk across the country and set up a farm with no form of bust support? That would be incredibly uncomfortable. Pioneer women wore corsets because they were smart. But the part that makes me happy is the little subsection. If you're going to try corset for the first time, don't lace it as tightly as you can just yet. Let your body get used to the slight constriction. Lace it down about one inch and leave it for about two hours. If your body feels okay, lace down another inch. If not, take off the corset and try again tomorrow. That's great. That is very true. They're talking about seasoning your corset, which Victorian women did, because you have to, otherwise it's gonna be really uncomfortable and the corset won't last as long. So that part is great, but the, oh, the outdoorsy look, the uh, pioneer women didn't wear corsets, plays into the stereotype that only wealthy women wore corsets, and Carolina Zabrowska has a video about this, but so I'm not gonna go into it in great detail, but that is not true. Women of all classes in the 1800s wore corsets. There are even uh, records of corsets being ordered for female prison inmates and female inmates in asylums. So all women wore corsets. This wasn't a status symbol or anything. It was just an article of clothing, just like how today everybody wears socks. These WikiHow articles oftentimes will have comments underneath. They all have a comment section. Sometimes they have comments, sometimes they don't. This one does, and I'm dying to see what some of these people have to say. How do I look like I'm going to a Victorian Christmas party? And the answer is, wear a red velvet dress with gold trimming, a v-neck, and lots of frills. Because we all know that there was a law passed in the 1800s that you could only wear red velvet dresses with gold trimming and lots of frills to Christmas parties. It was illegal to wear any other kind of dress to a Christmas party. If you did, you would be thrown in jail. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on to the next article. Okay, the next one is how to be similar to a girl from the Victorian era. And this is, this is sort of like the uncanny valley of language. It feels weird, like there's nothing, I can't put my finger on what's wrong, but something about this title just feels slightly off to me. How to be similar to a girl from the Victorian era. Whether you're just going through a phase, changing your look forever, or devoting your year's style, this article can help you and other females who want to antique themselves. This article is for any girl who would like to show their fascination with the Victorian era. And the uncanny valleyness of language continues. What is devoting your year's style? That, I've never heard of that before. To me, it sounds like some sort of like sacrifice and uh, sounds like a religious practice. I'm devoting my year's style. With the sacrifice of this corset, I dedicate my year's style to Queen Victoria. But I don't think that's what they mean. Also, this article can help you and other females who want to antique themselves. Sounds like something a robot would say. I can't be alone in thinking that that's just a really strangely written sentence. Ladies, remember, their clothing covered their whole body. Even a glimpse of the ankle is the stereotype no-no. Again, strange wording. Also, this whole ankle glimpse thing is another stereotype that wasn't true. I mean, Victorian women had to step up onto things as well and you'd lift up your skirts. They actually had skirt lifters for the purpose of lifting your skirt. So ankles weren't some taboo thing that everybody had to, de had to deny having. There were different levels of appropriateness. For example, this was appropriate. And this was inappropriate. Also, this dress just fills me with, with so many different emotions. This is not Victorian at all. It looks much more Lolita to me than Victorian. And yes, the Lolita style is Victorian inspired, but it's not actually Victorian. So if you want to, and if you want to dress Lolita, that's fine, but 
don't have your Lolita thing in, a, in an article about how to be Victorian because this is just gonna confuse people. Wear gloves, especially with lace. These gloves are a great way to show you love Victorian times. It really doesn't matter if it's black or white, but black is most Victorian looking. This picture is, I think this, this uh, article is kind of falling into the trap of taking all of the Victorian inspired things. So there's, they're taking steampunk and goth and Lolita and kind of cramming it into the category of Victorian. So these kind of lace glove cuff things would never have been a thing in the Victorian era. They did have lace cuffs, but they did not look like that. They looked like this. And also the black is most Victorian looking is just not true. The only time that you would really wear black lace is if you were in mourning. That's not a hard and fast rule. I'm sure there were some women who wore black lace just as a fashion statement, but in general, white lace was much more fashionable. There's this idea that the Victorians were all like wearing black and dripping with skulls all the time, and it's just not true, and this is really perpetuating that. Some Victorian clothing and people in general could be incredibly flowery and, and sunshine and rainbowy, like this dress, for example. Wear brooches. Brooches are very Victorian. While people from Victorian time mostly wore ones containing silver or pearls, emerald is accepted too. Yes, brooches are very Victorian. I'm very curious about their discussion of materials though. They're limiting themselves to silver, pearls, and emerald. The Victorians would make a brooch out of literally anything. There are Victorian brooches made out of carved shell, uh, cameos. There are Victorian brooches made out of insects. There are Victorian brooches made out of the heads of hummingbirds. Yes, if they couldn't eat something, they would wear it. And there's precious little meat on the hummingbirds. So they decided, you know what, we'll turn them into jewelry instead. So the Victorians were not limited to silver, pearls, and emeralds. They were incredibly creative with the, quite frankly, bizarre materials they used to make jewelry. Stay away from bright colors! And now I agree that you shouldn't wear this sort of like mustard ketchup electric blue ensemble, but that's just because it doesn't look good. They did have the ability to create bright colors in the Victorian era. We're going back into that, you know, the Victorians all wore black and were dripping with skulls and sadness. And they weren't. They had the ability to make these very bright colors, especially after the invention of aniline dyes in the mid-19th century. They could have easily produced this dress in the 1880s. I don't think they would have because it's in incredibly bad taste, but they could have done so if they wished to. Use either a very light pink or very dark red lipstick. These create the illusion that you're pale. No, we're getting into the, we're getting even deeper into the gothiness. If you were to go out with that lipstick in the Victorian era, people would think you were a prostitute. Okay, we are getting gothier the further we go. If dyeing your hair is an option, do it. Dark colors like jet black, black brown, or dark brown are very essential to this look. If you can't, it's okay. You just need to emphasize the rest of the look. However, it was more fashionable at the time to have lighter colored hair. What? So when I was reading the first part of that, I was thinking, okay, so now they're saying that you have to have dark hair to look authentic, but then at the end they say it was more fashionable to have lighter hair. So if it was more fashionable to have lighter hair, then why are they telling you to dye your hair dark? Is it a, a typo and they meant it was more fashionable to have darker hair? Because if so, that's not true. For most of the Victorian era, it was actually fashionable to have you know, golden blonde or dirty blonde hair. It wasn't really until the 1880s that having chestnut hair, we took over. I have no idea what this means. Is it saying that it's fashionable to have lighter colored hair and therefore you should dye your hair darker so you look unfashionable? Or is that a typo and it's saying you should... This whole section is a mess and I have no idea what it's trying to say. Really, the most accurate thing you can do with your hair is to not dye it. They had hair dye back then, but it was very primitive and not very good. And really what you should do is just wear your natural hair because that is what almost all Victorian women did. Okay, this has to be a joke by this point. Keep your eyes wide open. Victorian ladies were always paying attention. Do they think that the Victorian ladies were spies? I'm a Victorian lady and I'm watching you. 
Okay, so now this article is kind of just branching off into general life advice. Like it had some things earlier about being nice to everybody and having good posture. And that's great, you know, do that. Yes, be nice, have good posture. And it's continuing in that vein, like pay attention in school, take notes in every subject. Yes, that's really good advice and you should do that, but I don't see what on earth that has to do with being Victorian. <laughs> and here, stay organized. Like, yeah, you should, but that doesn't have anything to do with being Victorian. I mean, how does this person think that school went in the Victorian era? Welcome students to this Victorian school for Victorian children such as your Victorian selves. You're expected to pay attention and to take notes in every class, and if you do not, you will be expelled from the era and will no longer be Victorian. You're also expected to remain organized. I'm, I'm beginning to get a headache here. Read classic novels. Yeah, that's a really, that's really good advice. Try reading the literature of the period to get an actual flavor of how people lived back then. It's, it's a really, really good study technique. Reading Sherlock Holmes can actually teach you a lot about how people lived in the 1800s. This says, read classic novels. Victorian pics, like vampire love stories, are okay. What? I'm sorry, show me, show me one, show me one vampire love story that was written in the Victorian era. I know there were vampire stories written in and before the Victorian era, like the vampire and, uh, what's that other one? Oh, Dracula, duh. But they weren't love stories. <laughs> yes, read Victorian novels like Twilight. So a lot of the questions underneath this article are in regards to specific instruments, like can I play the guitar or play the violin and still be Victorian? Yes, you can. But there's this one, how do I hold my fork like a Victorian lady or girl? Which is just so extraordinarily specific. I just want to know what situation this person was in that led them to need to know, how do I, how do I hold my fork? Like what, what, what made it so that, that was the one thing that they felt like they needed to ask? At last, my disguise is complete. I've read all of the WikiHow articles telling me how to be a Victorian lady. I will blend in perfectly. Aha! You aren't a Victorian lady! You aren't holding your fork properly! No! If only one of those WikiHow articles had told me how to hold a fork like a Victorian lady! <sighs> well, this has been fun for me. I hope it's also been fun for you because I really enjoyed making this video and filming all of those little skits. Thank you so much to Sandra White, Kit Kat Stitch, and Mary Royal for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you would like to sponsor this channel on Patreon, there's a link in the description. Um, there will also be a link to my Instagram in the description. And I wanted to say briefly that this was all in good fun. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just having a joke. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to bully anybody. And if you want to wear a goth or steampunk or Lolita or any other kind of like neo-Victorian thing, that's fine. Go ahead. Do whatever you'd like. Just don't tell people that something is historically accurate when it isn't. That's that's just where I draw the line. Other than that, do whatever you want. All right. Well, it was lovely to see you, and I will see you again next time, I hope. Bye-bye.